was only like 10 girls doing everything. They were doing all the runaways, they did all the campaigns. The minute they got in front of the camera, it was like, whoa. Carol Wall, Naomi Campbell, Paulina Porisco, Iman, Cindy Crawford, Christy Turlington, Linda Evangelista, Stephanie Seymour. And those were the supermodels. The 70s started the stronger models, and in the 80s, we were channeling a more powerful woman. Girls were selling products through calendars, and there were contracts for cosmetics. The girls were working full time. They were literally models as a career. You believed these girls really enjoyed fashion when they would go down the runway and they were bigger than life. They were looking for huge auditoriums to have these shows, and then shows became the basis to start a girl's career. The designers were, were making it all happen happened, but the celebrities and the models were what was driving it. You know, it's kind of a perfect storm of, of beauty and glamour and commercialism. They want to have a cover which represents the, the coming 90s. And I said, I only, we only can put the five more interesting faces I know together. Well, that was the birth picture of the Super Bowl. It's a very special time that actually I wish to experience because it's so over the top. I mean, it was so crazy when Versace would show at the Ritz, he'd have a suite at the Ritz, there would be the parties afterwards. Within the supermodel group, there was the Trinity. Christy Turlington, Naomi Campbell, and Linda Evangelista. Everybody knew who they were. They could go down the street and it was like they were celebrities. Linda Evangelista, this is a girl that I could never have thought she was going to be the best model I ever met in my 35 years of career. She could do anything. She could manipulate her body to make it from less desirable into spectacular. I don't really have a style. You know, I love it all. The Trinity essentially elevated the financial dynamics of modeling. The prices were being driven up. My father saw the money I was making. He said, you know what, bring your little sister. <laughs> She's prettier than you are. Gianni Versace wanted these women to walk exclusively for him. Therefore, he gave them bonuses. Other designers reacted by offering higher bonuses. And soon there was a bidding war. Honey, I don't wake up for less than 10 bucks a day. <laughs> By 1992, the perfection and the status and the excesses of the supermodels were revolted against with grunge. A bit more messed up, darker makeup. Less styled and people didn't get it for a minute. When I finished modeling, right, mm -hmm. the poses were like all this big, you know. And then come the way. The girls walk down the runways like they're stoners. They're just clump to be clump and their faces are all whoop. This was a movement that brought with it models that were oddly beautiful. Kristen McMenemy, Alec Weck. In this environment that Kate Moss arrived and wiped the floor with the modeling industry. One thing that sets Kate Moss apart is that this woman's making trends left and right, literally every time she steps up. As with every great art movement, there's another counter-revolution, and that would be a return to glamour. Models like Amber Valletta and Shalom Harlow represent a more classic beauty, a return to what we knew. The business, the fashion, the trends are going to go back to classical beauty. And I came to the conclusion that classical beauty was always going to be in fashion. You're seeing a revisiting of classical beauty right alongside the alternative beauty. You might see Shalom Harlow dressed up. You might also see her in her grunge generation, her downtime. They were more likely to arrive in flip-flops and jeans than in a Chanel suit and a limousine. The industry continued to expand. I mean, it started from a finite point and it's just gone out infinitely. In what's thought to be an ephemeral industry, supermodels are working 30 years into their career.